Hi everybody and welcome to my YouTube channel and today I'm going to share with you five things that I wish I'd known when I started polymer McLean. And um, thing number one, we're going to jump straight in, is that you should or you can part bake your clay. Um, when I started claying I thought that part baking was kind of a waste of electricity and for wusses and babies and people that couldn't just make things in one go. <laughs> So I wouldn't do it. I've got a kind of thing where I, oh, I can just do one bake. I'm not going to waste time and energy. And um, it culminated in me doing this, making this entire decorated teapot in one go. In fact, I made it in one night. And I mean, every single time I touched any part of it that has clay on, I kind of ran the risk of squashing something. By the end of that night, I had... Uh, or rather the next day when I thought about it, I became a uh, part baking convert. <laughs> so now when I make things, I don't try and do them all in one go. It's crazy. And I would do things like this. So when I make my fairy doors, I would bake this uh, stonish gray part for 15 minutes. Then I would add my door and the embellishments and things and cook it again for 15 minutes. So that now, I mean, this is money in the bank. Okay, I can't mess it up. When I go to add flowers and stuff like that, if I don't like them, I can just peel them back off. Um, now I'm not going to take a part of the door with it, if you see what I mean. So I um, highly recommend that as an idea of part baking, so that when you come to each layer of, of uh, complication that you add to your piece, if it doesn't work, the layer underneath is still safe. Now, you might be wondering how uh, you managed to uh, fix the two layers together, the baked clay with the raw clay. And uh, what you do is you put a slick of this in between the two. Um, I use liquid Fimo because I'm usually cooking with Fimo or, or making with Fimo. And, uh, but you can use this, which is Sculpey Bake and Bond. <laughs> Not to be mistaken for something that bonds bacon, it's bake and bond. But I use liquid Fimo. One thing I will say is, uh, don't use a good brush for that and um, just wrap it up with a bit of something after you've finished, a bit of foil or something, so that you can use it next time because believe me, that brush is never going to get clean and it's only ever going to be good for liquid clay. Um, let me see, thing number three, do not fiddle. Oh wait, no, thing number two. What am I like? Thing number two that I learned. Um, is do not fiddle with the things that you are making. And, uh, every time you touch polymer clay, you change the surface of it, unless it's baked. So um, try and resist the urge to fiddle, touch, touch, like I'm doing my nose now. You're leaving little fingerprints, more risk of getting things on it. Just try and be cool, to do things carefully and um, don't just keep that, oh, maybe I'll just, you know. And if there's a little tiny hair on the surface, you know what, don't try and dig it out with a needle tool, scratch it off with your fingernail, or, you know, getting flipping wet baby wipes and scrubbing away at it, making it all muddy. That, and in my estimation, that usually rubs the hair in and the sort of, sort of sticks it down more. The best thing to do if you get a little hair or a little mark that you don't like is just bake the thing anyway unless you've got surface treatment on bake it anyway get it done and then just come at it with a little bit of uh, wet and dry sandpaper treat yourself to some wet and dry sandpaper and you know that comes straight off now you probably need to put it in some water well you will need to wet it and put it in some water because you don't want to be breathing in dust but just just do it with that and uh, i've got lots you know different different grits and uh I'll just cut them up to handy sizes and put them in these bags, although I managed not to uh, cut them to a size that fitted in the bags. <laughs> that, that'll be another video, probably. Um, what else have we got? Let's have a look. Oh yeah, so now we're on to number three, and that is to buy hot fix bling. We all love Swarovski crystals, don't we? And I put a lot of them onto my work um, down the... Uh, the years or months that I've been doing polymer clay. I uh, really love them and I used to stick them all in place with Lisa Pavelka polybonder and that can go in the oven or cold, it doesn't matter which. But I found that um, 
it was really faffy and difficult and you know what once I found out you could use the hot fix ones ta -da! brilliant light bulb moment you can just shove that straight on that little bit of grey hot fix glue there you put that in place and once that's baked in the oven that will fix your crystals where you want them so you won't have to touch glue which is awesome uh, we're ripping through these aren't we ah mica powder now we all like a bit of mica powder as I said before we all like a bit of bling I use these perfect pearls or pearl X things like that now they're great to use but I was getting a very sore nose and at first I didn't know why I was getting it but then I realized that I was breathing in mica powder so my advice to you is if you're going to use mica powder get yourself a pack of cheap little masks and use them I've got these kind <laughs> they make you feel awesome like some kind of awesome scientist <laughs> when you wear them um, and yeah just just pop that on just to stop only while you're flicking the powder around you don't have to sort of like wear them all the time and you know what if you've got kids or if you're childish like me grab a sharpie and have a bit of fun with them <laughs> just don't get mistaken for one of those weird guys on the uh, on the documentary about men who want to be puppies that's just me and number five uh, now okay I have ruined my video about six times doing this so I'm not going to uh, try and tip the camera forward I'm going to bring the mountain to Mohammed so to speak cling film cling film is a good way of rounding out the edges when you cut out a shape now a lot of you will already know that um, but I'm telling you anyway so some newbies might not so put cling film over your clay cut out your shape and that will give you a nice rounded professional looking edge at the top but what I'm also going to tell you I'm going to take this apart what I'm also going to tell you is a way of removing the cling film from your shape now sometimes it's not a problem to get the cling film off and sometimes it is I suspect that this I might be able to get off but sometimes the cling film sticks now I've told you just told you that you shouldn't be jabbing away at your clay and the easy way to remove the cling film if if it becomes uh, too stuck to the clay is to use a bit of masking tape or some sort of tape like this pop it on don't press too hard just put it on and then with any luck it easily peels off the cling film and you have not had to prod your shape that <laughs> it's meant to be a pumpkin shape that I don't know it's the quality of my mind but that looks kind of rude but anyway uh, there you go as you can see it's uh, it does give a nice round rounded soft kind of finish to your clay um, having that cling film on and that little bit of masking tape does the job and at last I've managed to make it work in the video without wrecking my camera and my video so those are the five things that I picked up along the way as I've been learning. Um, if I think of any more, I'll share them with you again. If you enjoyed this video, please uh, give me a big thumbs up down below, like, subscribe, all those things that you have to say when you're on YouTube. Thank you very much for watching. And I'd like to thank all the people that have been watching my videos and commenting and, and stuff so far. It's been really awesome. I think we've had some fun together and I hope to see you all again soon. Bye-bye.